<clears throat> All right, I have started the stream. No, I didn't take pity on you guys. I decided to bring you in at level 4 because most people are at level 4. Okay. Um, we were at level 4 before shit happened to us. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, good. So everybody's in and let me make sure everything is, is the way I want it to be. Uh, firstly, I'm going to open up Twitch chat. Oh, um, since everyone's here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, roll for my uh, um, portents. Cool. Good idea. Please do. You get two of them, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, that's, okay. That's wonderful. That could not have been better. Okay. I can really fuck up somebody's day. And, oh, good lord. <laughs> oh. Uh, so, portents, I roll, uh, after every long rest, I roll 2d20s. During the day, I can use those d20s to substitute substitute any roll of a d20 during the day. That is pretty useful. It's, it's incredibly useful, especially for a character that isn't going to be participating much in the actual combat herself. <laughs> like, most of my participation in the combat last, last time was a desperation move to shield Limbani from death. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Things... Like... Don't worry. Things will go a little bit better uh, yeah. this time. Well, I mean, we only had one combat-ready character in the last one. So... Yes, we did do two-player. Um, and I think I'm ready. I want to know... Holy shit, oh. I can't believe those rolls. <laughs> you know what I haven't done since I was a little distracted uh, this week? I haven't scheduled how long the last redshift went for, so I'll have to do that right now. So this redshift was 12 days long, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it's currently the 28th of a Heronis, uh month of the year. Yeah, so it's about autumn time, you're saying? Fifth month of the year. So Fifth. actually just getting into summer soon. All right, all right, sweet. Um, Aver was out for a while then. Okay. Yes, he was. Okay. I'm going to say hibernation. Uh, well, yeah, so uh, since it's been so long, and I mean, this is something we assume in general anyway, but um, uh, you would have been, uh, barring any other preferences, uh, you would have still been involved with quests and things um, uh, with the commission around Fort Maricus and the nearby areas. You would have been going on expeditions and stuff. Um, it's just that you've you've basically been uh, running guard duties and and material gatherings and trolls and uh, kind of boring stuff that maybe hasn't found anything uh, of of interest, um, and that's kind of what we assume a lot of you guys end up doing uh, in between sessions anyway, because we have we have one or two weeks or more uh, in between um, your actual attendance here, so. Uh, 
rather than it being three straight months of downtime for Alvis Taver, it's business as usual, just nothing interesting has happened. Now he can rejoin uh, the Aces and get some cool things. Oh, makes sense. All right. Uh, so give me just a minute, and I will ask for downtime activities from everyone. I just need to investigate one or two more things. So it's currently the 28th of there. Uh, I need to ask if uh, you all... Alvis Taver. Okay, so I have Nimbuses. I don't have Alvis Tavers. I don't have Ksenia's, and I don't have Limbani's birthdays. I need those. Oh. Oh, hmm. oh Alvis Taver doesn't know. He doesn't know. Okay. Um, no. Well, remember, he was a street urchin. Well, if I'm keeping track of your age anyway, we'll have to pick something. Uh, Alvis Taver likes celebrating it around the same time uh, as whatever uh, Christmas holiday was most common in the big city. Uh, uh, sorry, in the guild that he was in. So he okay, could. Okay, so uh, we'll, like, we'll call it winter solstice then. Yeah, yeah. He wanted okay. to make the use of double presents, and so that's what he said. That's that's fair. Um, so we'll we'll do that for you. Uh, so let's see. It's currently um, current year is twelve nineteen. So uh, you're twenty four. So twelve nineteen minus twenty four puts you at. Uh, well, do you want to be twenty four, or do would, do you want to be twenty four when you joined the commission? So you'd actually be twenty five now. Yeah, sure. That's yeah, cool. okay. Uh, very maybe, good. Maybe my guild sent me a, a birthday present during uh, during some time or something. I don't know. That's a good idea. Um, you'll have to give me uh, a week to think of that. I'll definitely um, give you time. Uh, yeah. Basically, his downtime here was finalizing a, a re big report or something, so it wasn't, you know, but we're good. getting it. So. Okay. Um, Ksenia and Limbani, you have homework unless you have birthday ideas right now. Um, yeah, I'm thinking probably, uh, the rough equivalent of October. October would be, uh, Tadus. Yeah, okay. Um, any, any date in mind? It's 30 day months. All, every month has the same, uh, uh, it, you're in the one note, right? You have access to the calendars, so you can I see how they're do. shaped. If I can remember where I put the link. Uh, 12 months of 30 days each, three weeks of 10 days each, uh, plus a half week at the end of the year. Okay. Um, so it's on par with Earth. Okay. Um, so it would be uh, early in the month, like probably the third or fourth day of the month. Okay. Uh, free Tadus. Uh, how old are you right now? Uh, let's see what I put down on the sheet. Yes. As soon as the sheet loads. Because it's being slow. Thanks for, for our coming. For our other friends who are watching, I'm still waiting on Amber Green, Mont Lauren, and Naya to give me their birthdays. 23. Okay, you're 23, so... Uh, you want to be 23 now, or... Uh, 23 i guess you joined uh after your birthday so 23 now works um yes. okay 1196 I is mean, your birthday technically everyone joined after their birthday unless they joined on <sighs> wow wow <laughs> okay uh we have ksenia um how about so, uh limbani any any thoughts yeah um is Brockus about february then Yes, it is. Perfect. Uh, 19th of Brockus, then. Great. And how and old are you currently? 36. Okay. So, born in 1183. Great. Uh, which means your birthday passed and you turned 36 a couple months ago. Cool. 
I track all of these things because it's very important. If I throw you guys something that ages you up by 20 years, I need to know exactly what that means. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Also, if this campaign ends up taking 10 years in, in world, I need to, um, it's a good thing none of you are Arakakra. Why? They Ooh, live, you. they live till age like 25. I thought they were, uh, 40. Is it 40? Maybe. I think it's 40. I think they're mature thought, by 25 or yeah, so. Yeah, I thought or it was like, the Tengu who die by like 30 or 25. The bird people, Tenku or whatever the fuck they're called. Kenku? Kenku. Kenku, thank you. Sorry, I'm too much of a weeb, so, yeah. That's fine. I mean, I thought that's just because they live a hard and dirty lifestyle, but I don't know, could be wrong. That's because they're birds. Oh shit, actually, birds live for fucking ever now that I think about yeah, it. Yeah, fucking parrots, dude. I know, or um, what? the, the biggest uh, reason why uh, my father always told me to wait until I was 18 to get an African pied crow is because they live for like 60 fucking years. You know what's weird? Tortles in 5e live until 80. <laughs> That's Only... weird. Yeah, it's but like turtle people. It's kind of I don't I don't think turtles in my world will do that. I think turtles no. in my world will live like elves. I yeah. think that's that the only makes more sense. Makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. I um, I could understand maybe an elephant person like like a loxodon living a shorter life. Yeah. Um, by the way, I just want you all to know, since I'm on this page of my OneNote document right now, that Vanther Zexiath is born on the 6th of half week. <laughs> um, and I didn't even have to change his age to make that work. Neat. Uh, okay. Let me ask you all a special question before we start today. Um... Ooh. Question number 23. How skilled are you at dancing? Not. Yes. Alice Taver was taught to dance as a requirement for being an agent of his guild. So court dancing. Yeah, with the uh, Troop of No Return, there were definitely plenty of uh, dance pieces choreographed and otherwise, so uh, plenty of practice was had. Good, quick answers. Okay, I, I like those answers. Um, thank you, everyone. I don't make it look pretty because uh, my charisma is so low, but because of my high dex, I I, uh, I probably make it look easier than it is. Maybe. You are you are skilled. You are skilled in the uh, mechanics of dancing. There you go. But makes... you're not. You don't make it like like it's not pretty when you do it. I have no presence. Yeah. When he really wants to show off, Nimbus will use his uh, self levitation to. Of course. Just what? Like... What, uh, what else would a, would an air <laughs> do? That's that's how. Exactly. <laughs> a little more detail, like with everything that Ksenia does, it took her forever to learn how to dance, but now it's so stuck in her muscle memory because she was forced to learn that it's there. She she doesn't know how, you know. Once she is told to dance, it just kind of happened. Took her forever, but now it's there. That's more excellent information. So that raises a curiosity for me, uh, for Limbani. Is it like a lack of rhythm? Just don't feel like dance and it feels silly? Never really got Not the footing? Desire. Not she's, much desire. Her, her kind of background is more of just like, she's she's kind of a woman on a mission for the most part, and... Stuff like dancing never really was something that interests her. Like, at that point, you might as well just give her a sword and somebody to dance against. So it's it's less of a, less of a desire to do it than a capability. What's your character's strength stat? Uh, That's a little straightforward. One second. <laughs> no, it should be in the one note if you actually want to know. I think everybody's attributes are there. Oh, sweet, sweet. I uh, it's actually it's just because of my character. Yeah, eighteen. Eighteen. Oh, okay. I'm gonna write it now. There you go. Eighteen. And oh. actually, for some reason in the one note, it I only could see it very briefly because the character portrait 
jumped up in size and is covering up the stat block. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Okay. All right. Uh, so I think what we'll do first is uh, we'll review the events that have happened last time, especially for Albus Taver. I don't know if you've been keeping up uh, with current events, Albus Taver, uh, but I'll, I'll update you anyway. Please and thank you. And then we will review what has happened uh, more recently. So, uh, remind me, what was the last time you joined? Was it was it uh, for the fire elemental? Um, I was told to join because something important happened at the fort. And yes, I did do something at the fire elemental. I don't know if that was after or before the important thing that happened at the fort. Uh, let me think. Well, you yeah. weren't. You weren't involved in the in the raid, um, so I, I believe it was the fire elemental. So uh, okay. I, I can I can double check. And before that, I think it was the uh, the open battle with Morio and the uh, the methods. I definitely remember that one. Yeah. but I was at another event or not event uh, at another game after that. Yeah. One. Uh, um, I might have not been for the raid, but I thought I joined for the... Okay, uh, the event. most recent one I have you joined in is uh, the one where you accompanied Dex, Aranaeus, and Bronku. To oh, yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. Fire the Fire Elemental. Yep. yep. Okay. okay. Makes sense. That makes so, uh, since then, uh, there's been a fair amount of stuff that's happened. Um, well, like half a year. Uh, almost, yeah. Um so uh your efforts uh in that mission helped to take that keep and it has become uh the site of the uh the third obelisk and the second real uh usable base for the commission uh, wow. well done the uh forest one is still not necessarily a base that we can rely on it yeah it's it, it is more a um small outpost that only houses a couple of people every now and then uh it's really only for trusted folks uh who who are allowed in by the dryad and um the 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 pixies and fey folk who live there have done their part to kind of um accommodate uh the humanoids and everyone um, but, uh, it, it's definitely not something where, where they want, uh, a, a, a large, like, they, they don't want, like, 25, 50 people hanging out there every day. Definitely. Um, it's it's less of an occupied outpost and more of an ally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I um, was even gonna say more of a diplomatic kind of symbol than really anything. It, it is, it is absolutely that. That's the correct way to think about it. Um, so, uh, shortly after taking, uh, the place now called keep silex um morio showed up there with a uh his riding his drake a whole horde of methods methods and one big uh golem sized uh magma method and uh party kicked his ass uh he died um and that was that uh so uh some other stuff has happened since then. Uh, a team went and cleared out Morio's keep of the flame skull and destroyed the teleportation circle that was in there so it can no longer be used. Um, uh, and uh, other than that, they didn't really find anything else in there, but it was uh, raised as a potential location to put another obelisk. And by now, that's been done. Um, so we're actually up to three bases, four obelisks total, and, uh, we have this kind of arrangement, um, where, uh, travel is getting a little bit easier, uh, so you'll see this when we get onto the world map later tonight, but, uh, mechanically speaking, um, the routes between obelisks have kind of been tread enough by the commission that people and scouts have forged out easy, quick paths and uh, aside from the very occasional change during the redshift that might that might alter the terrain a little bit, um, these things are going to be maintained, and you'll you'll be able to get to these places a little bit faster than you might have otherwise just trucking through the wilderness. 
Awesome. Uh, following that, um, once the commission moved into Keep Silex, so the place where the gargoyle lived and the place where the fire elemental took over, um, they noticed something. Uh, you recall that this keep is in the shadow of a large, lonely mountain. Um, and they noticed something uh, glowing uh, in, a, in a cave high up on the, on the mountainside. So they sent a team to go investigate it, and they found a uh, a creature. Uh, I can I can show you. Um, you probably would have seen or heard descriptions uh, of this, but uh, on roll twenty, um, this oh. fine fellow. Yeah. Uh, so uh, looks friendly. He he was he was a bit friendly. Uh, Aranais and Ronku were able to uh, parlay with him. Uh, they ended up they ended up landing on the name Worker for him because he um, is readily obsessed with this uh, strange arcane clockwork that he has um, in this cavern uh, up on the mountainside, and uh, it is unclear what this thing is for it is unclear what this uh worker's goal is although he says he, he he says he knows what it'll be when it's done and he's been working on it for his whole life apparently um uh so he remains up there um and is relatively amicable to diplomacy with the commission uh he has no interest in leaving his location and uh, Captain Van has gone to speak with him and gleaned little knowledge uh, aside from he sure is doing something up there. Uh, so, um, but uh, he, he also suggests that he knows things about the Redshift Zone and is willing to uh, divulge information in exchange for... Um, secrets, magic artifacts, that sort of thing. Um, so uh, his location is only a, a half day's trip away from that keep um, should anybody require him. Uh, and then another friend... Br bring a um, minesweeper. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, again, now that it's been cleared once, it's gotten a little bit easier to get up there again. Mines? Um, oh, there, there were some, there, there were some exploding pebbles. It's, it's okay. Great. We dealt with it readily. Great, Scott. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said bring a minesweeper. Was it a problem for Van? So more friends. Um, Naya and company went to visit Tilda finally as well after this, after the whole Morio thing finally uh, ended. And um, they found her home uh, led by the, the d magic device that Tilda provided uh, in a letter to Naya. And um, it sat, had tea with her, uh, told her she could come visit the commission anytime. They, uh, they told her where they're located. Um, how she could call on them. Uh, Tilda explained a little bit about how she's been able to survive in the Redshift Zone um, for generations, according to her. She's currently the uh, the the active uh, uh, member of her uh, family um, that's been living here for ages. Um, and uh, she has a certain magic imbued in in like the the stonework of her house which is a, a small cottage uh some some way to the east um that actually acts in a similar way it seems to the obelisks that dex created and are is able to repel the effects of the redshift so she's able to live a um a, a, a good life as a hermit out here um uh protected from the redshift in that way um so uh that happened uh then uh Ksenia and Limbani joined the commission 
uh, they went off to um, on their first mission to check in on grandmother and the seed she was trying to grow. And uh, so I can give you a little bit of information on what's happened after that quest, since it's your guys' first time back since then. Um, so they found that the uh, Albus Tavern, you might remember that this was a seed taken from one of the bulbs that was uh, guarded by those blight creatures in the southern forest. Yeah, um, yeah. I was kind of uh, bummed that we didn't get enough so I could send a sample. Right. Uh so the conclusion of that was that they would send one, they would bring one to grandmother to have her uh, cultivate it and do her best to uh, ensure this is a something that works. Um, I believe Nimbus's idea was uh, plan to get a fighting force of of twig and plant creatures uh, to um, to assist the commission. And uh, what happened when Ksenia and Lambani arrived was they found that the creature had indeed be indeed been born out of the bloom, but um, it was uh, it seemed well, well as soon as it came out of the bloom it kind of tore its way out of this uh, plant like shell and then just ran away into the forest. Um, they were able to track it down and uh, protect it from a hostile monster and uh save its life they were able to talk to it and um it was very timid confused afraid um and uh ksenia so you've been able you were able to spend a little bit of time in the in the week or so that you spent at obelisk bloom um, right. talking to this creature and um it's really like uh it's really just a child that mm -hmm. doesn't know anything uh, about the they world it's language been into. Rather quickly. <laughs> it it's it seems like that might have been something innate yeah like like it ca it came out with like the um the the the, the abilities of like a 10 year old um right. so so that's that's definitely the impression you get from this creature um and uh, over time, you and the Dryad and the, the, the Pixies, who, uh, after initial um, excitement, were able to treat it with, uh, with care uh, instead of, instead of uh, friendly bullying, mm -hmm. and um, kind of calmed it down and got it comfortable with living in that location. Um, and then a swarm of insects attacked Fort Maricus. Uh, near on 200 of them uh, came in from the north and uh, almost tore down the walls. Uh, there were a lot of wounded, um, but uh, fortunately enough, not a single death on the commission side. They were able to wipe out the entire swarm uh, in a defensive measure on the walls and uh, kill everything. But immediately following that, Captain Van sent out um, squads all across the charted red zone so far to see if they could find a source. And uh, so that was what we did uh, last session, two weeks ago, when uh, Naya and Montlaren and Zemar and Irenaeus uh, ventured in to uh, well, they they went to the location where uh, the party had originally encountered the first one of these stinging giant insect creatures, um, the place where they had cleared a forest of spiders, and there was no more forest there. Um, instead, there was an enormous hive surrounded by much smaller hives. Um, or, or vessels or hive-like structures of some sort, um, they were able to burn down the smaller ones with ease. Uh, and uh, whenever they did, a, uh, a thick, uh, foul-smelling uh, liquid spewed out of them, uh, hardened over very quickly. Um, also gross. Uh, yes, it is gross. Uh, even better and grosser is they were able to um, climb into the largest hive 
and uh, climb and battle their way through it um, after distracting a lot of the swarm that remained around the hive by setting uh, false fires um, outside of it uh, to attract them. And they found what uh, is apparently, uh, or was apparently, uh, the Hive Queen. Um, oh, cool. Which they slew after a significant effort um, on the part of the party. Uh, its body, uh, after they cleaved it from its uh, tendril that seemed to... Uh, attach into and through the whole hive uh, disintegrated and uh, with it, uh, it caused the 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 giant hive to start collapsing as the uh, the integrity of this thing's body uh, in in the walls and floors of this hive uh, yeah. uh, disappeared all at once yeah and yeah so the uh, the hive, began to collapse any 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 of the other insects the lesser insects that were remaining uh fled and um uh as the party escaped the hive the entire thing uh burst into a a tidal uh, wave of goop I think we lost you Did we did we lose me? No, I I heard that. I heard it. Okay. That might just be my audio. Oh no. Uh I'm can saying. you hear me now? Okay. Oh. Wait, I yes. hear you now. Great. Okay. Did, uh, did anybody collect any uh, samples of the hive? We mother? did get one sample, and especially um, like a carapace, like that. Not not even if that could be used for me, but like just whoever got the carapace would be. Oh, don't worry. We've got tons of carapace for all the ones that we um, killed. I um, I did a good job of um, trying to preserve not only all the stingers which we basically got all of them oh hell yeah I'll and pay tons for and some people for that. yeah we'll 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 talk about what we'll do with those um because i'm sure we've got tons of venom now so yeah actually, and then we can the uh, the other thing that. was the um i i had put in um the fort america's chat i i think i put it in there about uh uh well i'll just talk about all the various things i was doing yeah, I'll get to that. You you go first. Yeah. Okay. Um. So uh, that that does put us right on to uh, the remaining bookkeeping we have to do for all of the downtime we took. So, um, first things first. Uh, about the resources taken from the creatures in the raid. Uh, Nimbus and Soriana were able to salvage a lot of the venom from these creatures. Um, and what that what that comes out to is basically um, it is uh, it essentially equates to uh, one vial of poison per member of the entire commission for free. Uh, so anybody who wants a vial of poison that can uh, paralyze a creature on knocking it unconscious, please feel free to add it to your character. Can I um, write it in my notes that I sent one to uh, the guild? I think you could probably squeeze an extra one out of Soriana for that, yeah. Fuck yeah, even an extra one just for that? Fuck yes. I was just going to send him mine as a, as a good, good lackey. I mean, agent. I, um probably would have committed mine with the uh the project that i was talking about with um trying to get uh, a resistance built up to that specific poison so that way i can you know more or less be immune to it and just have to worry about the uh, the sting itself breaking the skin a poison resistance would probably take uh quite a while of training to establish um what you get uh, as Soriana's test subject is um, essentially a day of petrification. <laughs> uh, 
I can she, see that. She, she basically just syringes you with whatever she's got. She ma she makes sure you consent first. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure you already did. So yeah. uh, she pokes it in there. Uh, you don't feel anything for like 10 minutes. Um, she's taking notes. And then uh, your whole body essentially stops. Uh, y you spend a day on the floor. She makes sure your heart's still beating. She's pretty sure your heart's still beating. <laughs> um, she she will she will feed you some stuff to to, to make sure you live, um, but uh, that is not a pleasant experience. Um, I won't take your poison away for that, so you you can still have one. All right. Um, and. Uh, that was all of the poison taken from the uh, little creatures, the, the like dog-sized ones. Uh, the handful of gigantic uh, scorpions, scorpion-looking uh, ones, um, have a slightly more potent poison. And this stuff, uh, Soriana has actually salvaged and kept uh, a couple jars of it. And she has stashed those away on request of the Brigadier in case they are required later uh, for something important. Um, they're, they're a very potent paralytic, um, and there's not a lot of it. So uh, that's something where um, consider it available on request uh, if your need is great enough. Right, and not a full vial, but just a small sample of that I probably would have uh, sent back along with the uh, the preserved one, the fully preserved one that I kept, uh, the dog-sized one. That's perfectly reasonable. Um, and then uh, in regards to using the shells and, and chitin for armor, chitin. Uh, chitin, uh, yep. Yeah, that one. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, the... The carapaces of these things are a little too brittle to use as scale mail. Um, so you might be able to make something like um, a, a polished tool handle out of them or something like that. But uh. if, you, if you try to build armor out of these, uh, they're going to crack and they're uh. going to break. Um, I'll just have her. Sorry. Um... Would Pontus know if they could be made into a lacquer, maybe? To treat wood with? I don't know if they the bugs demonstrated any kind of uh, interesting properties, like when you cast spells at them or anything like that, or if... They didn't seem particularly resistant shiny. to anything. Oh, yeah, they did, actually. What? visual stuff they they don't actually see they sense by other means so oh, my attempt to right. protect myself with magic mirror was completely thwarted oh yeah, yes yeah they, they did have blind sight um uh but but that's more of like a uh, uh it's a sense uh, not a resistance tremor sense thing yeah, yeah, yeah. um so uh the only thing they had that was particularly interesting was that the um, the, the uh, sap juice honey that they make um, it, it uh, there was a sample brought back for Soriana and she was able to investigate it and um, try to discern its properties uh, and the results she got are basically like it's it is like concrete like it's basically a rock now um so it starts out as as a fairly viscous liquid um after about 30 seconds of exposure to air it turns rubbery and then after a minute has passed it's basically hard as uh, hard as a rock and you would need a pick to remove it interesting um, That's she has she hasn't been able to um like uh, convert it to any base elements uh, okay. at this point. Um, 
she certainly wouldn't mind being able to study more of it. She, uh, it, it has been reported that there's a big bulk of it uh, off to the north where the hive collapsed. Um, so if it turns out to be a useful resource, uh, it's available to collect. Uh, but that's what she's found out there. Um, and then uh, one final thing before we can play Dungeons & Dragons. Um, Limbani, I wanted to inform you that, just so you're fully aware, that apple you were given last time you played is a, is a healing potion. Oh, cool. So, I had a feeling it was something to that effect, but it's nice to good. have that confirmed. Please write it down. Uh, so that cool. we have that. Um, and I think, I think that was everything I had to tell you all. Um, so if we want to do a quick rundown of what everybody's been doing in their downtime, uh, you've all got roughly, a, a 10 days of downtime that you can spend, um, and, uh, or rather, before we do that, I want you to pick, uh, what quest we're going on today, because that might determine your starting location, uh, which might determine what's available to you. So why don't we do that? Quest board. Quest board. I know I would have been coming from um, Fort Maricus because I would have been doing all the research and busy work stuff. That's right. Flying structure, yep. That one's kind of interesting to me. Oh, the flying Fentals. structure is definitely interesting to me. And um, thanks, thanks to Nimbus getting that deep silver bracelet, he's been able to help Soriana uh, with her upgrades. And while she would prefer a uh, more steady uh, source of uh, water that is uh, charged with elemental power, uh, this is good enough for the level she's at, uh, at least for now and uh, she's able to make stronger potions with it. So she's been requesting some new stuff. That's cool. So with this quest board, what I'm getting is we've got two side quests and a flying castle. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, where are the uh, Hydra Thistle and uh, Fennel Silk known to be? Uh, great question. So... Um... Uh, yeah, you've definitely had time to chat with Soriana. Yeah. I heard a cat. Um, That's my cat. <laughs> That's a good cat. I love my cat. Um, you've had time to chat with Soriana about this, and um, she can tell you about both of them. So, uh, Hydra Thistle, she says, uh, a lot of the time, you can find it in um, in, in swampy areas, uh, near um, in in river deltas, it grows there. Um, but um, the th the thing is, um, it, it like looks like a entire bouquet of flowers. Uh, but really, the whole thing is just one flower. Um, huh. And uh, so so, um, if you find one of it. Um, you usually find a lot of it. So um, that would be a good one to um, bring back. Um, and, and then she'd be able to start growing bundles of it here. Yeah. Um, the other one, uh, fennel silk, is actually, it's not a plant. Um, it is a special silk uh, created by spiders. Um, that live in in deep deep underground terrain, and mm. um, Soriana's kind of familiar with these because uh, you, you know that's kind of her natural territory. Um, but uh, she thinks that um, because we do have uh, a a cave that uh, sort of a a mansion that turns into a cave that yeah. goes down very, very far. Um, she thinks it might be a good bet to maybe see if these things are native there. Um, yeah, so that's that's both of those. Hmm. All right. Okay. 
So I think... and then yeah, the, this this flying structure hasn't been investigated yet, but it was seen from afar, um, from uh, around Keep Silent, and uh, they saw it from the mountaintop. Um, so it, it's estimated to be um, maybe like uh, not not enormous, um, but but pretty big, like like more than a few hundred feet in diameter. That's pretty interesting. It's unclear how high up off the ground it's flying. Do we know what parachutes are? <laughs> I don't know, but we know what Featherfall is. Yeah. Got that. <laughs> there we go. Okay, if you got Featherfall. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. What kind of mage would I be without Featherfall? One who's unable to cast it. A nuker. Okay, fair. But, you know. Arcane Trickster. Shh. <laughs> what kind of utility mage would I be without Featherfall? <laughs> there it is. There you go. I, I, I like I like Floating Castle, honestly. Yeah. That's just uh, Floating Castle sounds interesting for uh, sure. Copper has a a, a complex. We uh we should probably plan to bring a lot of rope. And a pulley, maybe. I, I like the idea of pulleys a bit. What's the pulley for? Pulling us up. Uh or down really quickly. I like the idea of rappelling down really quickly so that if we have to like escape, we can just be like clip onto one of the ends of the pulley or something like that and Okay, you know, one other repel. thing. Can I still adjust my prepared spells given knowledge about what our quest is at this point? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So those are okay. that's done at the end of the long rest, and I would assume you're picking out your task uh, before the long rest is okay, over. Okay, definitely. If we're going to a floating castle, I'm getting levitate. There you go. But yes. Definitely I happening. I can get, but I really do like my so during the um not even the downtime itself uh but you know after the after the battle before the red shift i had been obviously helping out with the uh the stingers and um any any other bug harvesting and cleanup related tasks the biggest intact one i would have probably just used a uh, uh, levitate and moved over to a tarp outside the um uh -huh apothecary and had that preserved and probably been spending a lot of the time working with Soriana to kind of dissect it and pick it apart piece by piece get weights, drawings on everything, try to get Excellent. as much information as we possibly could um yeah and uh so you get as much information as you uh expect to receive from that um the the main thing that you get out of that is that this is um it is unnatural in every sense of the word like there there's no there's no part of this bug that came from existing structures that you know about like it's obviously similar to to uh regular creatures of a similar type but it's it's like it's not a shifted scorpion. You can tell that much. It's not a shifted like cro cockroach. Um, it, it's it's just something new. Oh, it's definitely its own creature. The fact that they're completely uniform and completely lack um, the effects of the red shift, it indicates to me that they likely originate from it rather than um, uh, having been turned into what they are from something else. That's a valid conclusion. So that's uh, interesting. 
along the way in either the smaller ones or the larger ones did we find any sort of gland or sac or anything that had a fluid similar to the stuff uh brought back from the the melted goo piles you didn't so uh while while the uh party from last session did report that a queen creature was able to uh spit acid um, it seems like that's not an ability that the smaller ones have, and uh, you assume they must, whatever that concrete rubber stuff that they make is, you assume they must make that similar to um, bees making honey. So it's 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 a uh, chemical process inside the hive, not something they generate in their bodies necessarily. That makes sense. Okay. Good to know. So, um, knowing that they're not stiff enough and sturdy enough to, um, really be able to take a blow, even plates off the bigger one, I would imagine, um, are just a little delicate. Uh, yes, uh, thing... they, they, it's like, it's like if you hit it with a hammer, it's going to shatter. Basically. Right. And the, the thing that I would be talking with Pontus about is the idea of taking the thicker ones um, cutting them down into smaller pieces so that way there's less uh, tensile kind of uh, weakness because it's not as long as a piece. You know, it's like if you've got a uh, an eight inch stick and you break it into a two inch right. stick and then you can't. It's hard to break that. Kind of the same sort of thing to to break them to smaller pieces, but then also to um, back them uh, actually on both sides probably with a. Um, uh, an adhesive and uh, something flexible like leather. Some so more that like brigadine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, plates sandwiched in between. I see. Uh, effectively, yeah, that, that would be effectively making studded leather. Um, that that may work out. Um, he's certainly willing to try it. Yeah, not for me, but anybody that needs to be fitted with studded leather, um, you know, more than happy to like keep it maintained like with magic. Yeah, because I only have leather armor. Yeah, that would so, be probably Pontus, well for you. Pontus is happy to take a crack at it. He's always down for some uh, weird experimentation. And of and course, course, to see how uh, it can integrate with your, your fire legs there. Yeah. Likewise, um, if uh, nobody's using any of the smaller brittle pieces, uh, just... It's my trader's uh, instinct that I'm jumping on it. I, I would discuss with Pontus if there might be any use of making that into a lacquer or something. Not now because they don't have a, uh, they don't seem to have any kind of resistance, but more, you know, is it something that can sell and then make the uh, fork money? And so then I would like a sample of it, of course, to give to the guild. And then, you know, maybe we can make money. Well, uh, might be able to make money out of it. Uh, might, might be able to use it to um, to uh, just around the fork to save money. Um, oh, absolutely! Yeah. Uh, instead of buying supplies, um, that would also be good. So, uh, yeah, that's that. That is a definite potential use of these uh, these smaller corpses. Well, yeah, just because if it uh, if the smaller bits can't be used for armor uh, in any case, and they're that brittle, then you know, we got to use it for something. We could use it for something. Indeed. Yeah, you know, I have to. I, I'll be honest. I haven't thought about this. I wonder how good uh, they are for cooking. Also a good idea. Yeah. Somebody's uh, if, tried it. Somebody in the commission has tried it, and I'm trying to decide who. I'm. Is that the sort of thing that uh, it suggested? I bet Soriana would do that. She Soriana says. would join the party, but she's not the person who would suggest it. See, exactly. That's that's the case I find myself in. Um, I, I, I am a uh, man, and yeah, a, oh, a you know what film, it is? So I have uh, weird taste, but it would be it would be Shashra. It would be the lizard. He, oh. he'd be like, "That's done. Look at this <laughs> rations." For a month. <laughs> nice. Um, and then, and then he pro he'd probably be the first to try it, and even he realizes you've got to like cook bugs to eat. Them. Um, 
so uh, he'd probably do that. And then I, Im- I imagine a-, a-, a full barbecue occurred at some point. Well, yeah, lobster dinner. Call them lobsters now, not bugs. You know, <laughs> okay. in order to make them a little bit more appealing when we eat them. A lot of lobsters are just the bugs of the sea. Red well, yeah, these shift just, lobster. Yeah, it's red <laughs> shift lobster. It's a, it's a it's a red shift lamb lobster. That's your that's gonna be your restaurant is red red shift lobster. <laughs> Bring your bib. I'm done. <laughs> right. Goodbye. Good game. <laughs> Night. Thanks for the game. Poison. <laughs> uh, you guys want to go on a quest? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's so, go on that flying structure. I, I really want to do that. I will say there was one other thing I was kind of toying oh, around yes. with let's, during the downtime. Was um, I was trying to find a way to make a stable platform and then That's basically... The make a bubble that I control underneath it and see how high I can raise it uh, with stability. At first doing it just with the platform to make sure I can do it safely and then trying it with my own weight, trying it with you know various different types of loads, you know, seeing if anybody was uh, interested in trying to give it a lift and I'm sure a couple of you know curious people maybe would have given it a shot just to see. And, and uh, you are um, you are discussing this in the context of shape water, right? Yeah. So one, I would be using one instance of my shape water to create the um, the chunk of ice that yes. the the ice platform, and then just underneath it, where no living creature is actually at in the cavity that I've created, I would fill it in with a bubble of water that is my second instance. And would be basically controlling the flow of that water as the way to push it up. You've been watching some Avatar recently? No. Okay. Nimbus is just, you know, he wants to try to learn a new trick every downtime. Right. Um, So uh, we will say uh, attempting to do this uh, with some practice will be something you might be able to pull off with an arcana check um because uh fine fine control of this balancing act uh will uh will involve that um or maybe if it's somebody else standing on that we'll have them make some dex checks for balance um but uh yeah so you can you can do two effects at a time and so you'd have the again you'd have like the five foot ice block and then the five foot uh, boost. Um. Yeah, and I mean the ice block itself would be mostly hollow uh, on the bottom with you know kind of a hollow lip on top for people to yeah. kind of hold on to. So it's it's got like a cavity that the water is underneath, so it's getting even pressure from below. Yeah, and, yeah. If you uh, um... If you want Nimbus, I can uh, make those dex checks for you so you can get a hang <laughs> on that. And then I can, you know, teach you how to do it and vice versa because I can also create water. That sounds that like what cool. you guys have been doing during your downtime. So uh, I'm going to give Alvis Tavern. Alvis Tavern, please take a physical d4 if you're riding the ice. And Nimbus, please take a mental d4 if you're manipulating. Rocket. Um, Fuck that's, yeah. that's your downtime for this week. Um, like Senya and Lambani, uh, would you like to have any downtime bonuses this time around? Um, I was kind of thinking about with those bugs, trying to see if I could uh, um, reserve one or two for um, dissection. Um, see how they tick, kind of thing. Um, yeah, so um, so let's see. I, I think you would have been uh, you, you probably would have been able to join Nimbus on this um, because uh, you and Lombani would have arrived back at Fort Maricus actually uh, a couple days after this whole event happened. It actually occurred during the Redshift um, okay. while you were both at the uh, the Obelisk. Um, Alright, then maybe she didn't have the uh, time to grab that. There was one other thing I had in mind uh-huh. uh, which would be uh, Probably asking Limbani to help her practice with her reflexes on her shield spell. Ooh, okay. 
Bonnie's totally down for that. Okay. <laughs> so that can count as physical training for the both of you, if you like. Cool. Uh, so we'll give you both a D4. Um, good. Uh, sounds like a plan. Okay. Uh, 11 p.m. We can start playing Dungeons & Dragons. Thank yeah. you for entertaining my bookkeeping bullshit. Um, <laughs> it's all good. That's part it's of Dungeons & Dragons. Stuff. It's fun stuff. It is. And I, like uh, I would just like to remind everyone that they have access to a single vial of paralytic poison. Um, for clarity, uh, this is something you can... Um, uh, I, I, will, I will need to double check my uh, um, my rules on poisons um, if you do want to use it tonight. But uh, essentially you can coat weapons in it, you can coat a couple pieces of ammo in it. Uh, it it's not a huge vial, it's like a, a, a potion vial. Um, so uh, single use effect, single use on a, on a bladed weapon or, or like a few pieces of ammo. And um, basically one battle's worth. Yeah. Uh, if you uh, if you are able to uh, knock a creature unconscious with the attack, uh, first of all, the attack will do an extra um, amount of poison damage. It'll be three d six, and you're, if you're able to knock the creature unconscious with that attack, um, it will become paralyzed instead of unconscious, um, and it will. Uh, I believe it will. It, it'll basically work the same way the bugs do, which is that it'll stay that way for um, at least an hour. Um, maybe more. Uh, let me double check. So, it's essentially going to be this attack. Uh, with the poison. Cool. Oh, are these the same bugs that attacked us? Yes, they are. Oh, okay. Land They've lobsters. They've been Sorry. a fairly long-term threat. Well, it's because we're eating them now, so... <laughs> now they're mad. Now, now we, now, now we can't fly. call them bugs. They, they do fly, yes. Yeah, so they're not exactly land lobsters. They're like sky lobsters. <laughs> lobsters of the sky. <laughs> okay, okay, I can change that. Sky lobsters. So, uh, allow me to just make sure I don't have any compromising information on my world map, and then I will load you guys in here. Compromise the information. Do it. Don't look at it while Roll20, like, uh, unloads all the tiles. Thanks, Roll20. By the way, uh, Limpani, you can assume that you have one extra vial of the, uh, the toxin. As... Oh, did you give it to me? Yeah, Ksenia yeah. has no use for it. I mean, oh, other than excellent. to study it, and that's already been studied, so... Honorable fighter and such? Question mark. What was that? Honorable fighter or some such? Uh, try, try uh, bodyguard. Librarian. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, no, librarian. Yeah, no weapons whatsoever. Oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah. Oh, I dig it. I I, dig I've it. only, I've only added an unarmed attack to my character's character sheet because just in she, case. She has a spell that then adds elemental damage to an unarmed attack, and that was just incidentally, um, which would bring my damage up to whatever the, uh, the spell adds in damage, because her unarmed attack does zero damage. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> I, I expect you also have very nice calligraphy. Possibly. You're a bookkeeper, right? The, these are very important people uh, in, in our guild. I, I, I certainly understand your type. Yeah. Side note, um, I assume that since it's been several days that we can heal back up to full, Yes, right? anybody who has not had a long rest, please click the long rest button. I'm just going to do it to be safe. Well, don't do it more than once. Cause, well, Alvis Tavern, you can do it more than once because it's been months. Uh but don't do it more than once, everybody else, because you do only gain half your hit dice back. Uh, so, so don't go spamming the button. Uh, well, I just anyway. abused my ability to spam the button. Ha <laughs> ha! That's fine this time. Okay. Do I get paid for each month? In uh, months? we we will assume that uh, your payments during time when you're not on screen. Uh, same with like 
same with like XP and stuff. We'll just assume that's kind of bundled into the usual stuff that you get, and you you have spent it uh, right. on things. I get uh, it. So um, kind kind of similar to how we do like the the fort upgrades, where like uh, the 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 six hundred GP to to get a thing upgraded is like how much you guys need to put into it, uh, but you're doing it relative to everybody else also helping out. Most definitely, I I I get it. Like I said, cool. most most right righteous it, it makes sure that you know i can't wait a couple of months you know get a whole bunch of credits and be like <laughs> bam i'm using all my credits to upgrade the fort or yeah, get that, myself that be, a whole uh, bunch of shit that would be tricky um yeah, one thing i realized i would really like to do is give tilda a house um but i don't have any singular house else here so i'll have to uh i'll have to put one together later um so uh you are all um at starting Fort Maricus, please. Uh, uh, well, uh, I, th I think you're starting at Maricus because uh, we've been we've been bug studying and such. Um, okay. So everybody would have been there during the latest stretch, so you'll have to you'll have to take the long way this time. Um, but so Albus Tavers aware. Um, following this road, uh, rather than the slightly more than two days, it takes uh, just about exactly two days to get to Keep Silo. Cool. We we established a road. Uh, it, it's less of a road, more of like a charted trail. But yeah, interesting. Alvis Taver might have ideas, things to save up for. Excellent. And, uh, I don't know if can, it'd be possible, but you can expect a similar one to make it to the other obelisk up here, um, in in good time. Really cool. So. Uh, away we so where would that leave us with rations, or oh, are we uh, going to start from there with rations? Uh, yeah, you'd be able to pick up rations from Keep Silence, no problem. So what would we be starting with for this one? Uh, you'd start with three as usual. Uh, right. So if you have less than three, you can load up to three, and then um, yeah, uh, if. If you are planning on stopping at Keep Silex, you could just, we'll just say you don't spend any on the road, and then you'll you'll just be at three when you leave. Sounds good. Um, so if you guys want to move, uh, feel free. Um, and I think I I think the way I was doing it on the road as well is we'll do uh, we'll do one encounter check per day on the road. Um. Um, what, um, we probably need some rope for this, just in yeah. case. Yes, if you're going to do supplies, I encourage you all to make sure your supplies and prepared spells are ready now. I made sure my prepared spells were mostly ready last time. Limbani, I think I spells go for you too, as a paladin. Sorry? I think you have to prepare spells as a paladin as well. So make yeah, sure you're I all think set. I'm good. Do I fill in the buttons, or do they, are they whited out? Uh, the Albus Tavern, I don't think you prepare spells. I think you you are good. And, oh, if you mean the spell slots, the, uh, filling them in means you spent them. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I have wizard spells. Level 1 wizards. We have a lot of wizards in this commission. I'm an arcane <laughs> trickster, not a wizard. Technically a student. But if some random farmer saw you, would they call you a wizard? No, they'd call me a student. After I corrected them. Even with the gold robe? I, uh, I color them green from time to time. <laughs> a metallic green. All right. But so, yes, probably. Let's start going Even more then. So. One. Is it hemp and rope or silk rope, by the way? Just wondering. Well, uh, hemp and rope is a lot cheaper. Yeah. Uh, yes. Quite. Um, how much is it per, uh, 50? Uh, 50, 50 of rope is, 
Let me find out for you. What do you need a fucking a rope for? Fifty of Loading rope, castle? one gold piece, and ten pounds. Okay. Um, Silk's ten gold pieces, five pounds. So I'm gonna grab the um, fifty foot rope ladder that we had made from a previous adventure. I remember. Sure. And I'm gonna buy another um, hundred fifty feet. Uh, hopefully, all in one bundle if I can get it that way. No, no knots, but it's fine either way. Is this of hempen rope? Yeah, I think that is a reasonable request. Okay. A mark is roughly a gold piece, yeah? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yep. I will get uh, 50 uh, feet of silken rope, then minus down. Because I'm snooty. There we go. Holy shit, I can drag and drop rope. It's great. Now, is it the correct weight? Five pounds for 50 feet. Which is really why I did it, because I'm a fucking gnome. Yep, five pounds. Lovely. I have to get rid of two pounds. Are those all the materials everybody's buying? Yep, yes. and then I'm grabbing up some of my uh, other supplies of materials that I had hanging around. All right. And uh, I can easily drop those two pounds because it's no longer winter. I don't have to get all of this winter stuff. I'm going to find out what the weather is like for you all today. Thank you. All right. That's helpful. Uh, yeah, that actually would help uh, whether or not I need a poncho. I believe six is a thunderstorm. Ah, oh, shit. Oh. I need my poncho. Okay. Not too bad. So the redshift clears and thunder hits at the same time. Oh, what's a redshift storm like? Does it actually rain cats and dogs sometimes? <laughs> you haven't had anything alive happen yet. Oh. Uh, occasionally, over you've seen it rain pebbles instead of hail. Um, you've heard stories, uh, this, this story has come up in our game several times already, but you've heard stories from the commission of, like, the first month they were here, it literally rained knives. Um. That sounds unfortunate. It was unfortunate for that build, for the buildings especially. Um. Um. Oh, God damn it! I'm on who's gaming now. Uh, well, there's going to be a break in the video here, everybody. Sorry.